typically, there are two types of capacitors that are commonly available to us. The electrolytics, they're the big ones that you've seen with the green uh, casings on, in our case, some of them are black or other colours, but for the most part, uh, we've got lots of green ones here. Um, the electrolytic capacitors, they're a pulverised capacitor, so they only work in one direction. Put them in back to front, they go pop. Um, those generally have very large capacitance values, and they're also quite large in size as well. So um, I think the largest electrolytic I've seen is a 10,000 microfarad. It was about as big as a film canister, so it was about that big. All right. Um, so they're pretty big. Um, they also come in different voltage ranges. Now the voltage that you see, so we might, so I'll show you an example um, capacitor that you might find, electrolytic type. So you electrolytic capacitors. Okay, so they're polarised. Okay, so they have a symbol that shows that they're polarised. Right, so a little plus on it indicates that that's the positive terminal. Um, generally large. Okay, large in both in size and in capacitance study. So microfarad sort of scale. So maybe. 0.1 microfarad right through to 10,000 microfarads. Now 10,000 microfarads is actually 10 millifarads, but we generally don't refer to it as millifarads just because, well, we sort of want to indicate the size of the capacitor that's being rather large, so 10,000 tends to do the job. Um, so, uh, generally large in capacitance and also in size. So the bigger the capacitance, generally, the bigger the capacitor actually is physically. Um, they also have a voltage, maximum voltage So the maximum voltage that's basically the voltage that you can charge it up to before it'll fail, okay? So I'll talk about how they're actually constructed in a moment and that'll sort of, like you'll see why it might happen. Um, so if you ever see one microfarad, one microfarad 63 volts, one microfarad indicates that that's the capacitance of it. So it has one microfarad of uh, capacitance and a maximum voltage of 63 volts. So if you are trying to uh, choose a capacitor and your voltage that it's likely to ever see, ever be charged, is greater than that n number, that is not the capacitor for you. That one will fail. Okay? And depending on the actual physical size, also change, depends on this voltage a bit as well. So generally, uh, like high voltage ones tend to be a little bit bigger, quite a bit bigger. Um, and also manufactured a bit differently as well. Okay, um, so electrolytic capacitors, they're polarised, generally large, so microfarads on a scale, uh, up to many thousands of microfarads. They have a maximum voltage, unless your capacitors have a maximum voltage, uh, but they're usually written on the actual side of the capacitor. They tend to not write the picofarad code on electrolytics because they're big enough, they can actually write the value on there. So you might see it actually written on the capacitor one microfarad, like that. Um, the other type of capacitor that we use quite often are called ceramic capacitors. Okay, so ceramics. Now ceramic capacitors are not polarised probably the main difference. So the value, which way you put it in doesn't matter, but they tend to be quite small. Yeah. 
mean capacitance. And they can be very small in size. So you can get surface mount uh, ceramic capacitors. Generally don't get surface mount electrolytes. You can, but they're generally bigger than normal ones. Um, so there's, but they're generally, so in the range of uh, one picofarad through to uh, maybe one microfarad would be a very, very large um, ceramic capacitor, okay? So I think the largest ones we've got here are 470 nanofarad, okay? Which is sort of about half a microfarad, okay? Um, they also do have a maximum voltage, but it's generally not written on the side of the capacitor. And it's also generally reasonably high, so I think it's like 100 volts or so. So it's reasonably high. Um, the other thing about uh, electrolytics that I failed to yeah. mention is that they suffer something called leakage. So you can sort of think of a capacitor as being a bit like a bucket that stores electrons, okay? And that bucket's got a little hole in the bottom, okay? And that hole allows the, the charge of the capacitor to sort of decay away after a while, based, without it having to go through anything, okay? Uh, ceramic capacitors tend to be a little bit better at having lower leakage. And you can get some ceramics that are very, very, very low leakage, so they hold the charge quite a while. Okay. Um, all capacitors are made basically the same way. So, construction of construction of capacitors are all basically made the same way, and the symbol sort of gives an idea about that. So the symbol for a capacitor is that, if it's polarised with a plus on it, and it stems from the fact that it's actually basically two plates of metal separated by an insulating layer between them. Um, so two parallel plates separated by an insulator. Okay. Now, in electrolytics, they tend to pack that with a effectively a brine or a salty solution, and that sort of helps store the charge. That's why they're so large in both size and capacitance. In ceramics, uh, not so much. It's they have a metal surface, and they actually rough the surface so you get lots of surface area because the the capacitance, among other things. is determined by the area. Okay? So if you sort of picture this in three dimensions, two plates that are right next to each other. Okay, it's the area of the plates in there, so the area within that that determines how much capacitance is, so how much how much charge you can store. Um, I'll go into a bit more detail later on in the year exactly what capacitance means, but uh, for now all you need to know is that the bigger that area, the more the capacitance, the more it gets, the more it's charge you can store. Um, okay, now you can always tell whether there's a charge across or a capacitor is charged because it'll have a voltage across that. So if I were to put my voltmeter across the capacitor, I would see the more I charge it up, the higher the voltage across it. Okay? And if I have it in series with a battery, like so, like so, then this capacitor will try and charge up to be the same voltage as that capacitor. Okay? So basically, um, it's, it'll store that charge, and we can see that stored charge as a voltage. And it has the effect of being able to, if I then have something uh, connected in parallel with the capacitor, if I'm pulling current, like let's say I had a circuit that was pulling, had peak periods where it pulled lots of current, just for a little bit. If I put a capacitor there, I can allow that because the current flow out of a capacitor can be very, very large, like an order of a few hundred amps. But out of a battery, it's limited. It's 
storage to provide. And so uh, if you want to help a circuit that uses lots of current in very small pulses, you put a capacitor across it and it sort of helps that, filters it out. So it provides a bit of a buffer, I suppose.